Today's English lesson, we will be discussing narrative writing and our focus is on setting. I'm Vanessa Francis. So, when you think about setting, some things should come to your mind. When you think about setting, if you're even setting a mood, setting a table, setting anything, you're putting things in place in a particular order, correct? Correct. So when we look at setting in narrative writing, we're looking at something similar. How do you put things in place to create a certain effect? So here are our objectives for today. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define setting. You should be able to discuss the function of setting in narrative writing. You should also be able to analyze various scenes based on the components of setting. So first and foremost, what is setting? So we talked about the idea of putting things in place. So if you think of even when you watch a movie and a gentleman wants to create a certain romantic mood, he'll get some flowers, he'll get some soft music, he'll turn down the lights, perhaps have some delicious food cooking so the lady who is coming over can smell the delicious aromas. So right there, he has created a scene. So in your stories, you're creating a scene. So it's the context in which the story is going to take place. The context meaning the situation. Your story has to have a particular situation and this situation will be comprised of various elements. And these are they. So you have the time. Now for time, you're thinking time of day. You're thinking time period. What era is it set in? Is it set in 2021? Is it set in 1980? Is it set in 1835. So depending on what era you are focusing on, that will take in the time element. So you're not just thinking of the time of day, you're thinking of the time period as well. And of course, it has to take place somewhere. So it takes in the place, the physical environment. So is it going to be in a school? Is it going to be in a supermarket? Is it going to be out on a busy street? So it has to have a physical environment for it to happen. Then the one that many of us leave out, the atmosphere or the mood. Now, those of you who do literature know about mood and atmosphere, the idea of the emotions involved. So you have to create that emotional setting as well. So if your characters are supposed to be happy, then you're going to describe the situation in such a way that it brings out their joy. If they're supposed to be afraid, you're going to describe it in such a way that that fear is heightened. If they're angry, you're going to focus on the things that will bring out the anger. So you have to make sure that when you're describing your setting, you take into consideration the time, time of day, time period, time of year as well, summer, winter, spring. We don't have all of those, but you can create them in your mind and nonetheless. So you think of the time of day, time of year, time period in general. You think of the place, the physical place that the action will happen. And you also think of the whole idea of the mood, the atmosphere. So is it going to be tense? Is it going to be relaxed? Now, of course, if you're going to have to incorporate setting in your writing, it must serve a function. So this is what it's going to do. So again, it provides you with a narrative's context and the context is shown through these means. So where the action is going to take place. That much is obvious. The setting must be a place. You think of the social climate. Now, depending on what your story is about, the social climate may or may not come into play. The social climate has to do with things like the prevailing social constructs. Say, for instance, you're going to have a good versus evil type of story. Then your social context must bring that out. It must be a situation where there is this ongoing struggle in your society with this faction versus that faction. So you want to bring out whatever societal 
concerns there are in that particular story. It also takes in your time period. So again, the whole idea of what moment in time is this going to take place? Some of you like to watch period films, films from way back in the 1600s, Shakespearean times. You can write stories about those time periods. Granted, you'll need to do some research first because you need to understand the time period in order to write about it. But if you've read enough and you have a firm grasp on it, then go right ahead and write about it. Now, what important events are taking place in the world? And this does not necessarily mean in the real world, although that can have an impact as well. You're really focusing on what important events are taking place in the world that you have created. So in this world you have created, what are the general concerns? What is everybody looking at? What is everybody hoping for? So you incorporate those into your story setting. And of course, the social norms and expectations. If you're going to have a man versus society type of conflict, then of course, this will definitely have to come out in your setting because you need to establish what are the rules and regulations and then show who is going against these rules and regulations and why they're going against these rules so we know if we need to support them or we need to chastise them. So the whole idea of the social norms and expectations can come out in your setting as well. And the weather, don't overlook the weather. The weather can have an impact. So if it is that your character is facing a man versus nature type of situation, that type of conflict definitely needs to take in the weather. And even if it's not that kind of conflict, think about it. Your character's situation can be heightened or it can be impeded by the weather. So this person has to meet a certain deadline. You can have the weather help it along or you can have the weather cause problems. So the weather can come into your setting as well. And then the season. What season are we in? So is it a hot time of year? Is it a cool time of year? Is it a cold time of year? There are certain things that you associate with different times of year and your setting must reflect this. So if your story is taking place in the summer, then there are certain things you have to describe that are related to summer. If your story is taking place in the winter, whether it be Jamaican winter or American winter, then there are certain things that we associate with those seasons. So again, be careful. Make sure you are consistent. Make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. So the function now. So setting connects the story's elements. What are the elements of a story? You have character, you have plot, you have theme, and of course you have setting. So setting is like the linchpin. It holds all these together. It is the one element that all the other elements have to interact with. Your characters have to interact with the setting. Your plot has to take place somewhere. Your themes will interact with the setting as well because your setting can also be the reason that a certain theme is coming out. So your story needs to connect all these elements together, your setting needs to connect all these elements together. It also builds meaning in the narrative. What do we mean by that? Now, if you have a story that is just happening along, at some point in time, you need to stop and think, where is this happening? Because what is going to happen is your story is taking place. We don't know where anything is going on. So your reader is basically lost, just like your setting, lost. So you need to have your story take place somewhere so that the meaning can come out. So when your character has to sit at home in bed, then we know that they are comfortable there. This is their safe space. When your character has to go out because they're afraid of people, but they have to leave the room, they have to leave the safe space, then we understand why it is that they are so nervous about going outside because you have already established that the room is their safe space, their safe haven where they hide away from everybody else and now they have to 
exit the room and face the world. So we get that tension coming out because you have established the setting. So it gives us meaning as we go through your story. Now, one thing that we don't think about is the fact that the setting elicits an emotional response from the reader. Think carefully now. When your reader is following along and your story setting is changing, of course, or you just keep the story in one place because there are amazing stories that happen in one place. It does not change. Then while your reader is getting into the setting, you have described it so well, you have incorporated it so well into your story that your reader is now transported right there with you in your story. So wherever your main character is, that is where your reader is as well because you have placed us there. You have put us there with the words you have used to create this scenario in front of us. So we're no longer just onlookers. We're actually invested in the reading now. Of course, it will help us to visualize your story better. So if you tell us that your setting or your character is on a busy street, then those of us who are aware of what a busy street entails will start to imagine your character being on a busy street. And then as you describe the different things on the street that are necessary to describe, we'll get to that later on, then of course, we are there thinking about these things as well. Now, of course, you need to understand how you decide on a setting. And there are different factors that will cause you to choose one setting over another one. So the obvious reason should be that you want your setting to fit the purpose of your plot. So whatever your plot is about, you want to make sure you have a setting that matches that. So your plot can't be about people overcoming some natural disaster, yet still your setting is in a living room. Where is the natural disaster? Just in the living room. Unless it is a living room in the middle of a storm, it out in the open. So your plot and your setting need to correlate. And then the setting also has to fit your story. So whatever you intend to happen in your story, your setting has to reflect that. Your, your setting has to enhance it. Remember, you know, your setting is what creates the mood, creates the tone, creates the place for all the action, the time for all the action. So the story and the setting cannot be in conflict. Leave the conflict to your main characters. Now, the setting also has to fit your main character or all your characters for, for that matter. So the setting has to be aligned with what the characters are doing. So if your character loves to go out and at no point you show your character in that setting, then how am I to believe that this character really loves to go out when you have them stuck at home the entire time? So the setting and the characters have to correlate, they have to match. Remember we said earlier, all the elements are interconnected, they're all interrelated. So we cannot have one sticking out while the rest are in harmony. Everybody needs to play their own part and create this beautiful masterpiece of yours. So, of course, there are some steps that you'll need to follow in order to craft your setting. So your first step, you need to decide what kind of mood you're trying to establish. So is your story supposed to be one with exciting moments? So you need to establish an exciting mood. So you need to create that type of mood with your words. You need to create that type of mood with your setting. So if it's supposed to be exciting, then you need to choose a setting that you can use to make the excitement great. So when you're saying what is happening while it is happening, we feel our hearts racing to as we are reading. If it's supposed to be a relaxed, leisurely mood, then you can't have it taking place at a track meet. You can't have it taking place at Dover Raceway. It needs to take place somewhere quiet, somewhere peaceful, somewhere calm. So maybe by a river, maybe at the sea, maybe just in your room, maybe on your veranda, under a mango tree. Get the point? Right. Now, of course, you need to decide on what time period or era is best for your story. Now, again, this will go back to what you're familiar with. Please remember, 
It's good to try new things, but also before you try, do your research. So you need to understand what is happening. So if I want to write a story during Shakespearean times, then before I do that, I need to go and read up a little bit about what the people were like, what type of vehicles there were. So I can't have a Honda in 16 when when because they did not exist. So we need to be true to the time period. So you need to do a little reading, a little research first. If you're going to do something contemporary, fine, no problem there. Stick to the evil you know, but at the same time, there are still some things you need to understand because you might want to set your story in a different country. You need to understand the norms of that country as well. So you still will have to do some amount of research. If you live in Kingston and you want to set your story in St. Thomas, you can't just think off the top of your head what St. Thomas is like. You might go and offend somebody from St. Thomas. So you need to understand where this is going to happen. So if it is outside of what you're familiar with, do your research. And of course, you need to know what atmosphere you want to portray. So your story is one of struggle and overcoming struggle. So you want to make sure you build that atmosphere that gives us the tension. We can feel the struggle happening. We can understand the struggle. We can say, yes, the struggle is really real for true. So you want to build that atmosphere and you want to ensure that the atmosphere you are building is contributing to your plot. It is contributing to your character development. It's not just there because you were told it needs to be there. It must be working alongside the other elements to achieve your final result. Now again, you've heard this before, you must incorporate all the elements of your story. So one thing that happens sometimes is that you get so caught up in trying to ensure that you establish the setting that you isolate it. So you're just talking about the setting and nothing else. You're not using the setting to push the plot forward. You're not using the setting to tell us anything about your characters. You're not using the setting to do anything except just to tell us about the setting. No, you need to use the setting to push something else. You have a hidden agenda when you're telling us about the setting. Now, of course, one thing you must ensure you do is appeal to various senses when you're describing the setting. The most obvious one is sight. Yes, you're going to talk about what you can see, but we don't only experience life through our eyes. We hear, we smell, we taste, we touch. So when you're describing the setting, incorporate all the senses, give us a multi-sensory experience. So we can hear the water lapping over the rocks. We can feel the cool breeze on our face. We can even feel the dirt beneath our feet. We can feel the heat of the sun. You can smell some ripe mangoes. So all of those describing a nice rural type of setting, not just with what you can see. So try and incorporate at least three. See if you can use three of the senses because you won't always be tasting. You won't necessarily be smelling all the time. But try and incorporate at least three each time. Now, a rule I would love for you to remember. Do not describe the setting all at once. You don't break from the story to just describe the setting and then go back into the story. What you're supposed to do, infuse the setting as you go through the story. The next thing that ties into that, do not over describe the setting. Show us what is going on instead of telling us. So instead of telling us that it is hot, you can have your, your character sweat. The sweating will tell us that the time is hot. And the last thing, Remember now that your story has a direct effect, the setting, sorry, has a direct effect on the characters and the plot. So you cannot isolate them any at all. You need to always put them together. So your setting must work in conjunction with these other elements to create. You're putting things together. It's like making a dish. You don't just use one menu item. You don't just use one ingredient. You put several ingredients together, the right balance, Put them together, mix them up, stir, shake, whatever you need to do. Put it in the oven or on top of the stove and then you are finished. 
So we have talked about what setting is and what setting does. Now we need to look at setting in action. So you're going to see some samples of setting in established writing. So here's the first one. So for each of these samples now, I want you to identify specific, specific details that relate to the setting. And we're going to discuss those elements as well. So our first one is an extract from Hard Times by Charles Dickens. It was a town of red brick, or of brick that would have been red if the smoke and ashes had allowed it. But as matters stood, it was a town of unnatural red and black. It had a black canal in it and a river that ran purple with ill-smelling dye and vast piles of building full of windows where there was a rattling and a trembling all day long and where the piston of the steam engine worked monotonously up and down like the head of an elephant in a state of melancholy madness. So look at this extract and see if you can pick out the different points at which the setting is being brought out. What in here is showing you the time, time period, the place, the atmosphere? What in this is showing you those details? Have you found them? Quite a number of details in here. All right, let's look at it. So highlighted here are various details related to setting. So the first detail, it was a town. So we know it's not out in the countryside. We know it's a town, it's a metropolis. And we know it's also red brick. We know that it says it would have been red if the smoke and the ashes had allowed. So we understand that this town is somewhat industrial in nature because where would smoke and ashes be coming from to tarnish the color of the brick? And then it says it was a town of unnatural red and black. So right there, we're getting more into the idea that this is not a place that is pleasant to look at necessarily because why would you describe it as unnatural? So right there, a sort of mood is coming out. Then it goes on to say, a river that ran purple with ill-smelling dye. So again, another sense is being appealed to. We have been seeing colors all along. Now we're smelling this ill-smelling dye. Then you see vast piles of building. Now when you talk about vast piles of building, then you're thinking about a, quite a number of buildings just packed up one on top of the other, chuck up as we would say in Jamaican parlance. And then it continues now. There was a rattling and a trembling all day long. So right there we get the sound images coming out. So we have sight so far, we have smell, and now we have sound. So we can hear this rattling and trembling all the day long. And then look at the next one. What does that bring out? Worked monotonously. What does that word evoke in you? What does it tell you? Is it telling you about the time? Is it telling you about the place? Or is it telling you about the mood? The mood, correct. And then look at the last detail now. State of melancholy madness. Right there again, another element that tells you about the mood. So in this piece, we have the place. We know it's a town. We're not sure about the time because it hasn't given us a specific time, but we know that it's a period of industrialization because it's talking about different mechanics and different machinery. So we know it's not that far back. And we also know that the mood is not a happy one because we use words like monotonously and we use words like melancholy madness. So those are not words that inspire happiness or joy. So these are words that tell you that there's a sadness going on right here. So let's look at what details these belong to now. So here are the elements that we saw. So we got multi-sensory details. We got things that we could see. We got sounds. We got smell. 
so we had multi-sensory details in the setting. We also got vivid images. So we got this color. You notice the repetition of the word red. And then we saw the color purple as well. So we got some very clear images. You could actually see this town in your mind's eye. When it said the vast buildings all packed up. So you could see the clutter of buildings. Then it described the physical setting very clearly. So it was very explicit. We didn't have to guess how the physical setting looked. It did give us a clear picture of it. And because of that, we could place ourselves in this area. And the next thing, we got an indication of the mood. So the writer did not tell you the mood is sad, but by using the words that we looked at, you got that sensation, you got that feeling, that mood came out. So again, remember, you're to show, not tell. So you can use your description of your setting to bring out the different things that you want to bring out in your story. Let's look at another example. So this one is from The Dark Witch by Nora Roberts. So the cold carved bone deep Fueled by the lash of the wind, iced by the drowning rain, gushing from the bloated sky. Such was Iona's welcome to Ireland. She loved it. How could she not? She asked herself as she hugged her arm, arms to her chest and drank in the wild, soggy view from her window. She was standing in a castle. She'd sleep in a castle that night. An honest to God castle in the heart of the West. So again, look at this piece. What are the indicators of setting that you can find in this piece? We have a young lady, perhaps, maybe a little girl. And she is somewhere that we can see she's not accustomed to because she's marveling at the fact that she's in a castle. Hint, hint. So what are some other details about this setting that you can pick out from this? Let's look. So look at that first sentence there. Cold, carved, bone deep. Now this is not just some regular cold, you know. This is some bone deep cold. So you can understand that it is not supposed to be pleasant. It is bone deep cold. And notice it continues, fueled by what? The lash of the wind, iced by the drowning rain. So really and truly, the weather is very cold, is very wet, is somewhat dreary. And we are told that this is in Ireland. And those of you who are familiar with countries that side of the world know that this is perhaps typical weather there. But look at what follows. Your writer says she loved it. So notice now, the mood is not what this setting would cause you to expect. The mood is totally different from what the setting would cause you to expect. So your writer right here now is showing us how you can use your setting in an ironic way. Because after describing the weather like that, you would expect this person to be miserable, but she isn't. So right there, irony is set up. And then we get more description now. So she drank it all in with what? The wild, soggy view. So again, the whole idea of the countryside washing away. And we get the physical setting, which is a castle. And we know where the castle is in the West. So we got quite a number of details coming out in just that one paragraph. So here they are now. So again, we had multi-sensory details because we saw things and we felt things. We were given a very, very graphic description of the cold. So where you are, you probably felt a little chill reading it. You got clear images, they were very vivid. So there was no question of what was going on. And we got an explicit explanation of what the physical setting was. We were told it was a castle, we're told it's in the West, and we're told it's in Ireland. So we got the physical location quite clearly. And we got the mood as well. 
this girl was happy, which is quite ironic, but still. And the contrast now would cause us to start wondering now, because why would she be happy in a setting like this? So right there, you should be intrigued to read on to find out, is this girl crazy? Or is there a reason that she's happy surrounded by all this misery? So that right there is something to pull you in and to cause you to want to read further to find out why. So the setting right there is performing its function. It's causing you to want to read more. Let's look at the next one. Lucy Knight min-stepped around clumps of horse dung as she hurried towards Regent Street. Must not be late, she told herself. What would he think? She carefully navigated the cobblestones as she crossed to hail a handsome cab, which she preferred for its low center of gravity and smooth turning. Lucy did not want to appear as if she'd been tossed in a carriage, especially tonight. Not wearing a ring, I see, the driver said as she boarded. I beg your pardon? Nice looking lady like yourself out alone after dark in the cold fog. You needn't worry about me, sir. I'm only going to the circus. Piccadilly it is, ma'am. Now look again. What are the elements? Now notice, we know it's on Regent Street. We know that she has these thoughts that she doesn't want to be late and she's concerned about what somebody will think. We know that she was walking on cobblestones. And again, you would need to know and understand what cobblestones are in order to know if it applies to this particular setting. Then there's mention of a handsome cab. What on earth is that? So that is something that also gives us a clue as to the time period between the cobblestones and the handsome cab. It is pointing us to a particular era. And then it goes down. So we know it's after dark and in a cold fog. So again, that is something that is expected in a particular place. And then it says, she says she's going to a circus. So we're getting little details as we read through. And then the driver answers Piccadilly. So we know it's Regent Street. She's going to the circus in Piccadilly. We also know that she's taking a handsome cab, which is a horse-drawn carriage, a small one. And we know that she's walking on cobblestones. So right there, we know that this should be some European country. And if you know where Piccadilly is, then you'll know which country it is, which is England. Now, what I would love for you to notice, how does some of this come out? How did some of these details come out? Was it the narrator who brought it out? The narrator brought some of these details out, but look at what the narrator did. The narrator had your characters talking and through their dialogue, we get some of the elements of the setting coming out as well. So again, the setting is not isolated. The setting can be infused. So here are the elements. So again, vivid images. And you will see this word, this phrase come up quite often because your setting should have vivid images. It has dialogue that infused it. The dialogue was used now to bring out some elements of the setting, the physical setting. And then we got an explicit explanation of where the physical setting was. So we didn't have to guess too much because we were given some details and you could piece it together to figure out where it is she really was. And then of course, through her thoughts, we get the mood. You notice she's anxious because she's asking the question, what will he think? And she can't be late. So we get the anxiety in the mood, the tension in the mood. Where is she hurrying to? Who's waiting on her? So all those things now will force you to want to wonder, where is she going? Who is she meeting? What is so important about this person she's meeting? What is so important about this meeting? So right there, you are drawn into the reading. All right, so let's look at another one. Now this one is from Oliver Twist, also by Charles Dickens. The public houses with gas lights burning inside were already open. 
By degrees, other shops began to unclose and a few scattered people were met with. Then came straggling groups of laborers going to their work. Then men and women with fish baskets on their heads, donkey carts laden with vegetables, chase carts filled with livestock or whole carcasses of meat, milk women with pails, an unbroken concourse of people trudging out with various supplies to the eastern suburbs of the town. As they approached the city, the noise and traffic gradually increased. When they threaded, threaded the streets between Shoreck and Smithfield, it had swelled into a roar of sound and bustle. So now, look carefully at that one. What are the elements that have come out in this description? Dickens has created a scene for us, but what are the things we need to note in this scene? Have you noticed them? Do you see anything speaking about the time? Do you see anything speaking about the place? Do you see anything speaking about the mood or the atmosphere? All right. So here are some of the things highlighted. So public houses. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, you might be more familiar with the term pub. This is where it comes from. Public house is, is a longer version of the word pub. In our, in our situation, it's a bar. So really and truly, it's a bar, but they did not call them bars in this time period. They call them public houses. So he's being true to the time period by giving it that name. And notice too, the next thing true to the time period, gas lights. We have electric lights. I don't know of anyone with gas lights. There might be one or two people perhaps, but for the most part, we use electric lights. So we know that this is a time that is not present. This is in a prior time. Notice the use of the word then. Then came struggling groups, then men and women. So the whole idea of constant activity. And then if you look after that, we have several punctuation marks being used. So we have several semicolons being used to give us lots of details of activities going on. So this scene is a busy one because based on all the things that are happening here, we know that it is not just a little Sunday stroll going on. We know it's a busy town. We have carts, we have chase cars, we have people walking around, we have milk ladies with pail, and notice the last thing that is said, a concourse of unbroken trudging people with various supplies. So constant activity is being described to us. So this setting is not one that is just lazy. This is a setting where lots of activity is taking place. Now, we also get the place names. So we get Shoreditch and we get Smithfield. And then it tells us now it had the roar of sound and bustle. Now, naturally, with all this activity going on, you did not expect it to be quiet. So you did expect that there would be noise. So you cannot be describing a setting that is full of activity and not describe the sound of it. You have to include the sound there because we must be hearing people talking. We must be hearing things going on. And here we get that. So here are the elements that we needed to see. So again, vivid images. And these images now capture the town teeming with activity. We get the physical setting because we're told where it is happening. And we also get a description of this setting. We get the transitional word now that conveys a sense of continuity. And in all of that, the mood is implied. So we're not told the mood, but you can capture the mood based on everything that is going on. Okay, so we're going to wrap up our look at setting by giving you something to do now. So I'm going to present some pictures and each of these is of a different type of setting. And I want you to look closely at them and write down the different elements you would use in describing this, set this setting and the activities going on. So let's look at the first one. Now look at that. That should be a familiar sight in many towns across the island. 
Now, if you were to have your story take place here, what are some of the things you would have to include? You'd have to include, of course, perhaps the temperature. We can see that it's in the daytime, correct? So you might have your character feeling quite hot. If your character, for instance, is a young man in the hoodie with the bag, he's supposed to be sweating right about now. So you can incorporate things like that into your description. So your character walking down the street, perhaps, would have to hear certain things. They'd have to see certain things. They'd have to feel certain things. Perhaps even smell certain things, pleasant and unpleasant. There is a restaurant right there, so they could smell the food being offered. You notice there are speakers, so they could hear music being played. They'd hear the chatter of the different people that they're walking past. Perhaps they have to be pushed aside by somebody who wants to get to where they're going. So there are different things that you can pinpoint in the setting that you can describe. Let's look at another one. Now this is something slightly different. Now when you look at this particular scene, what comes to mind? Notice you have an overgrowth of foliage. You have what looks like a house in the background. So what kind of story would you set here? Perhaps you could have some men hiding out in the house. Perhaps you could have a haunted house situation going on. What kind of details would you need to include in order to bring out whatever mood you want to create? So if you're going to have some thieves hiding out here, then of course you want to bring out the sinister nature of what they're doing. So you have to describe how it is that the place is a reflection of how they are on the inside, decrepit. If you're going to say a haunted house, then of course you have to use the details to bring out that little anxiety in your reader. You want to read, but you don't want to read because you're getting scared. So there are details you would need to include. Perhaps the rustling in the bushes, that would add to fear. You can probably have some owls or other night birds when the time is dark. You can have some slithery, creepy crawlies. Enough are we afraid of lizard, you know. I know, I see how you're afraid of lizard. Put some in there. So you can use these things to build the mood, build the anxiety, build the fear in your readers. So got this other one. Not so fearful. This one is okay. So what do we have here? We have a mechanic and he's in the garage. This one is for the young men, because I know that the young men sometimes feel left out. So if you're going to describe this, there are certain things that you need to incorporate. So of course, you'd have to incorporate the sound of metal. So the sound of engines, perhaps somebody is spraying something. So there are various sounds that you would incorporate in a scene like this to describe a scene like this. Of course, you might smell things like oil. You might smell sweat. What are some other things you think that you could incorporate to get a multi-sensory detail going? So don't just focus on what you can see. You also need to focus on what sounds you might hear, what you might feel, probably the weight of picking up certain tools, perhaps even the heat, because if somebody was working on an engine and the engine was running, then certain parts of the car will be hot. So you can think about the various details that you could incorporate. Maybe this story is about a man who is scrapping a vehicle. Maybe the story is about somebody who is helping out somebody who is falling on hard times and they need the car to go and try and get a little business going. So right now he's working off his own time, working for free, trying to help this person get on their feet. Many different scenarios could come out of this. And depending on the scenario, that is how you would incorporate, incorporate the setting. So if it's supposed to be something happy, then of course you'd focus on the details that make it happy. If it's supposed to be something sad, focus on the details that would make it sad. Now look at this one. This is interesting. So we have some buildings. So we know that this is or was some sort of community, some sort of town. 
But when you look closely, you see that they're run down. So think about what kind of details you would need to include in this. Would it be the same details in the previous one that we looked at with the house in the bushes? Or would this be something different? Because if you look closely, this isn't so remote. It's a cluster of buildings. So the same details would not all apply. Of course, you can still have a few rats and lizards scurrying about, some roaches for good effect. But overall, you don't have the overgrowth because it's not in a rural setting. It's more urban now. So you have to look at describing things to bring out what. What is happening here? Is somebody living here who is feeling like they are at the end of their rope? Is somebody living here who wants better for themselves but can't see how to get it? Is somebody living here who has done some very vile deeds and they're hiding out so that people can't find them to exact their revenge? What kind of story can you build with this setting? And how will you use this setting to enhance your story? So you have to think of these things. When you look at a scene, what is happening? What can happen? What ideas are going through your mind? Let's look at another one. Now right here, we have a totally different vibe. So we see this group of people and based on the items there, you should be able to guess where they are. What are the details that tell you where they are? We see glasses, we see a counter, we see bottles, we see some screens in the background, and they seem to be lined up at a particular counter. So where are they? They're at a bar, good. And based on how these people are looking, you can determine what kind of sounds you need to describe. So you'd have lots of what? Talking. You'd have lots of laughter. Can anybody whisper in this situation? Nobody should be able to whisper and get heard because based on the volume of people there, it should be quite loud. And this, I would assume, is pre-corona times, I would like to hope. So they would not have been socially distanced right here. This would have been the norm two years ago. So in describing this scene, you would have to ensure you bring out all of those various details to make it a rich setting. Let's look at one last one. Now look at this one. We have a beach at night. Now, there are many different ways you could go with this. You could go with romantic setting, or you could go with some devious deeds taking place, some smuggling going on, anything of that nature. It lends itself to many different ways that you can interpret it. Now think about it carefully and you can write a story using this scene in your story. Well, guess what? That's all the time we have for today.